Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Ohio Republican Congressman Steve Shabbat. He represents the Buckeye State's 1st Congressional District and is also chairman of the House Small Business Committee, which earlier this week designated Tuesday of this week, November 17th, as National Entrepreneur's Day. And the chairman is here to explain the importance of this designation and the work he's doing to help aspiring and existing entrepreneurs. And, sir, thank you very much for your time today. Oh, it's great to be with uh, you, Greg, and also with your listeners. Well, let's talk about the importance of this designation. Why did your committee think it was important to name November 17th as National Entrepreneur's Day? Well, because entrepreneurs are so important to our country. They're the main engine of job growth and uh, really economic growth all over America today. Uh, And we need to be doing everything that we can to encourage rather than discourage them. And uh, unfortunately, there are more American businesses nowadays that are dying, going out of business, uh, than being created, being born. And so we need to do everything that we can to turn that around so we can employ more people in this country. And I know you've got some suggestions for making improvements, but just to give folks a scope of the role that entrepreneurs play in the economy, I don't know if you have specific numbers, but in general, how many businesses, how many people are employed by, by small businesses or entrepreneurs? It's like 28 million now, and it's probably, that's the official number, so it's actually probably uh, even larger than that. Approximately half of private sector uh, workforce in America today are employed by small businesses, uh, generally entrepreneurs, and about 70% of the new jobs created in our economy uh, today are small businesses. And so um, they're critical uh, to uh, what, what this country is all about. Mr. Chairman, you mentioned before that the deaths of businesses right now are outnumbering the number of entrepreneurial births. What are the main reasons for that? Well, I I hate to say it because I'm part of the government, but I think the government itself is one of the big problems. We overregulate. There are just burdensome uh, paperwork regulations that small businesses have to uh, deal with. Now, a large uh, corporation, if we pass some new regulation here in Washington, They don't like it, but they can generally deal with it. They can hire a couple more accountants or attorneys, and it doesn't really hit their bottom line all that badly. But a small business, uh, an entrepreneur just starting up, these overly regulated uh, bills that are passed or or that Congress passes and turns over to the bureaucracy to add what they think about things, what it ought to be, uh, is is a real problem. So uh, I'd say the overburdensome regulations that small businesses have to Uh, put up with are one of the main things that they have going against them today. What do you see as the most burdensome ones? The most burdensome one, there are so many, it's hard (laughs) to say. I I like to use uh, my district as as an example. Um, If you put all the regulations, just paper, end-to-end papers, it would go all the way from the Ohio River where the Cincinnati Reds play at at, uh, Great American Ballpark, all the way up to the Eiffel Tower at Kings Island, which is over 23 miles, and it's impossible for people to deal with all that. You know, if you had to say which one in particular, I think probably Dodd-Frank would be one of the worst ones past the lady, or or, uh, Obamacare itself. But those are probably the most egregious recent examples. You also say that one of the things you'd like to see done as chairman is making the Small Business Administration more efficient. What are your priorities there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, And there are some loans. I would encourage small business folks, if they're trying to expand, to consider contacting uh, either their member of Congress who can put you in touch with the SBA or contacting the SBA, Small Business Administration, directly. But unfortunately, they're so paperwork intensive and take so much time, oftentimes people give up after they've gotten into the process or don't even start trying to get a loan through the Small Business Administration. So they need to be streamlined, a lot more efficient than they are now, uh, much more consumer-friendly. Talk just a little bit, sir, about the opportunities available, though, through the SBA. If you can navigate the paperwork or in the future, if there's less of it, what are some of the advantages of dealing with the SBA? Well, there are loans specifically for folks who are, you know, a minority of one sort, uh, either uh, uh, women or African Americans or, or, or vets. Uh, you know, if you've served our country, worn the uniform of our country, there are programs that you have special access to, or certain ones are set aside for certain people. You know, we have 7A loans and 8A loans and 504 and 
I mean, there's a laundry list of things that people have available uh, to them, but we're trying to get the SBA's attention that you need to make these things more consumer-friendly than they are right now. And when there are disasters, for example, the SBA is there to, to try to help people, although we saw in Katrina and in, in Sandy that the bureaucracy that people have to deal with can be very daunting. Well, we've talked a lot about paperwork in a number of different environments, and one of your other priorities certainly deals with that as well in terms of time consumption as well as paperwork, and that's your effort to simplify and reform the tax code, specifically as it relates to small businesses. What do you see as some of the roadblocks right now, and and what would you like to see done? We could talk about that for like hours or days or weeks. Um, It's it's so bad. If I had it here in front of me right now, it would be eight Bibles thick. Uh, It's about 75,000 pages now. It changed changes all the time. Nobody understands it. Money Magazine used to do a survey with 50 tax experts, and they'd give them a hypothetical set of facts and ask them what tax did they owe, and they'd get 50 different answers, and they'd all be wrong uh, because nobody understands it. So what we need to do is simplify it, make it go in one of two directions, I would argue, either go to a flat tax or a simpler, fairer tax, uh, or get rid of the IRS and get rid of income taxes altogether and go to a sales tax. Either one of those, um, I would argue, would be much preferable to, uh, to what we have right now. What are entrepreneurs telling you? Obviously, as the chairman of the Small Business Committee, I'm sure you hear from them on a regular basis. Uh, in addition to what we've already discussed with bureaucracy and, and regulations and, and tax complexity, anything else that they uh, are particularly hopeful that they can see out of Washington or, or just in general? Well, they, they complain about the uncertainty of what's coming out of Washington. Even if we do things they like, you know, like expensing uh, equipment that you've bought uh, or a whole range of things that you can do. With, that when we pass these things, we tend to do it at the 11th hour. Either the Congress and the President can't get their act together or for one reason or another it's thrown into some huge, we call it an omnibus or uh, a continuing resolution, you know, that's it, at the end of the year. We need to pass these things early in the year. So even when we're doing something that people like, we do it early enough that people can plan for it. There's, there's too much uncertainty, and, and we ought to get that right. We're speaking with House Small Business Committee Chairman Steve Shabbat, Congressman from Ohio, the Cincinnati area. And, and as our last uh, topic here, uh, Mr. Chairman, you've obviously talked about the importance that entrepreneurship plays in our economy, but also some of the challenges that entrepreneurs face, uh, and, and in some cases are quite daunting. For those folks who believe they've got a good idea that they could launch a business but aren't sure of the environment right now, what do you tell them? Well, access to capital is, is, you know, key. Uh, People need money. They'll oftentimes borrow uh, from, you know, friends or family or sometimes they'll even put it on their credit card. So people need money or if they want to expand an existing business, uh, they'll need money. And uh, so I would argue that one of the main things that we, we should do to help them is get rid of Dodd Frank which was supposed to deal with the so-called too big to fail banks. This was, you know, kind of a reaction to the economic meltdown we had. But it's affected uh, community banks and credit unions because they now have a whole new level of bureaucracy hanging over their heads. So we ought to get rid of Dodd Frank to free up money so that people out there who have a good idea will be able to borrow money. You know, right now it's a, it's a real problem for a small business person to actually uh, borrow money nowadays. Well, sir, certainly some ambitious uh, items on your agenda. We'll be keeping in touch and uh, following along to see what kind of progress can be made in the months ahead. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Greg. Take care. You too, sir. Ohio Republican Congressman Steve Shabbat represents his state's first congressional district. He's also chairman of the House Small Business Committee. Again, November 17th was National Entrepreneur's Day. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.